Well, uh, before we wrap up the show, we need to talk about uh, Mitch Marner. Everyone's favorite player. As I mentioned off the top of the show, because we have some new developments. Mm -hmm. It it always seems like there's a new development with this Mitch Marner story. Um, No matter where I go, Lepore, no matter who I talk to, everyone wants to talk about Mitch Marner. Everyone's asking me, is he going to stay? Is he going to go? What are the Leafs thinking? So there were some uh, reports recently from Darren Dreger, who seems pretty locked into the Marner camp. I know there's been like jokes in the past that like everything from Marner's dad is like filtered through like Darren Dreger. And he's like kind of like the mouthpiece of like the Marner camp and the Marner family. But Darren Dreger recently uh, made some comments and said, I know here I'll, I'll read the story. He said, and are we so sure Toronto doesn't want to extend Mitch? Mm -hmm. I'm not. I think True Living would rather extend Marner than trade. But they're not having those discussions yet either. It's still early. It's very premature across the board. So what's your take on what's happening right now? Like, I have been from day one in the camp that I think the Leafs should keep Mitch Marner. And I have not gone away from that. I still believe that they should find a way to re-sign him. And people have called me an idiot and they've said, I, I'm insane. And this is a terrible take, but I still think the Leafs should keep him. I don't think you should be giving away um, elite wingers uh, who do the stuff that this guy's capable of doing on both sides of the puck, just because you're mad and you're angry that he had a bad playoff series against Boston. And to be fair, it wasn't the only bad playoff series he's had, but don't give me this bullshit that the Leafs, Cannot win in the playoffs without this guy. All right? Don't give me this bullshit that it's impossible for any team to win with Mitch Marner on their roster. And don't give me this bullshit either about the cap space, about how the Leafs are going to have all this cap space. What makes you think they're going to spend that cap space in the right way? Just because you have the cap space doesn't mean shit. Because guess what? They're always going to be on the hunt looking for the next Mitch Marner or looking for two players who are going to give you production that's 85% of Mitch Marner. So guess what? I think you should just keep Mitch Marner, wait for Tavares to come off the books, and then use that salary cap space that you're all clamoring for. Anyway, I'll I'll end my rant there for now, Laporte. I I need to hear your take on the situation as well. Well, You're done. I'll just carry on, Bruno. Um, It's on the table. People don't want to say that out loud, but the fact of the matter is, a player of Marner's age who is approaching free agency, a contract extension is on the table. It's a definite possibility. And we, like we've talked about this at nauseum. I think everyone who talks Leafs has done that. But he thinks, I mean, I say he, Dreger, that Trill Living, if it was up to him, would re-sign Marner. I think he would too. And I, I don't know why. Like, I, I don't know Brad Treliving. I have no inside information here. But I I don't think that's the guy or that's how he would want to free up cap space because you touch on it, Bruno. It, it's hard to fill in a positive way. And you look at how the league is going, right? And the way these play, these star players, we're getting into these numbers. Okay, they look astronomical. They do, right? But... At the same time, you have your certain amount of guys on a roster, and then you have a cap. You're getting to the point now where an average player is making what, like four million a year. So really, the the value, like an av- an average player, four million. So if a guy's making ten, eleven million, he's these two and a half average players. Well, yeah, that that, that seems fair to me. So again, I, I have no inside information on this. Um, and Bruno will take a joke that I often make a joke that I often do, but I, I think if it was up to Trev, he would extend Marner, but then the caveat is, well, what's the number and how's Marner's camp going to ap- approach this? Are they going to play out the year? So I, I just think, I think that's, what's going to happen. If I have to make a prediction here, whether or not Mitch Marner is a Toronto Maple Leaf in 25, 26, that I don't know, but I think he plays the year in Toronto. I, I think he finishes next season wearing a blue jersey. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope he does. I think he's taken a lot of crap during this process. And listen, you could say that 
a lot of it was brought on by Mitch Marner for not performing up to his standards in the playoffs. And again, not only in this past series against Boston, but he's had some rough moments in his playoff career with the Toronto Maple Leafs. But guess what? So has Austin Matthews. People just want to want to forget that Austin Matthews, he hasn't lived up to expectations in the playoffs either. Go look at his playoff numbers. He's not putting up McDavid and Dreisaitl numbers in the postseason. And I get it. Some of this is 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 due to the fact that Mitch Marner's contract is up right now. Like Matthews has been extended. Nylander has been extended. Um, no one's really talking about John Tavares because, you know, he's, I don't know, he's Stunner. not as polarizing as Mitch Marner is, even though his contract is coming to an end as well here. Uh, Marner is obviously the better player. You can probably get, you know, more value in trading Mitch Marner. Um, I don't know if this is the perfect comparison, Lapore, but we just saw the Boston Celtics win the NBA championship. And where I'm going with this is, if you're not a big basketball fan, um, I'll, I'll kind of give you a backstory here on this Celtics team. So their two best players are Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Okay. These guys at a very young age, like were making the playoffs, were already like leading this team to pretty significant heights. Like they got to an NBA finals where they lost to Golden State, multiple trips to the conference finals, but they just couldn't quite get over the hump. And so many off seasons went by where not only Celtics fans, but, you know, fans from around the NBA were saying the Celtics got to trade either Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown. They can't keep these two together. These guys can't lead this team to a championship. Well, lo and behold, sometimes it pays off to be patient in sports. Sometimes it takes time. And I'm not saying that, you know, we haven't been patient with Matthews, Marner, and Nylander like shit. They just finished their eighth year in the league, and they only have one playoff series victory. But guess what? They have not missed the playoffs their entire career. Go look at the Ottawa Senators, who we've talked about multiple times on this podcast. They have their entire core locked up long term. That team can't even sniff the playoffs. They can't even get into the playoffs. Like Things could be very different here. You know, everyone wants to trade Mitch Marner and break up this core. Making one wrong move like that, that could jeopardize this team's, like, playoff chances. It's time for a quick break for a word about Manscaped. Now that the Toronto Maple Leafs are out of the playoffs, are you ready to enjoy the summer just like the Leafs? Because if you are, you are in luck. Because our friends over at Manscaped have you covered from head to toe this summer season. With the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra, this ultimate all-in-one grooming kit is set to have you looking and feeling your absolute best. Trust Manscaped and unlock the confidence you need to turn heads this summer. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com using our exclusive code GFP20. Lapore. Manscaped never disappoints, unlike the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> they always disappoint, Anthony Bruno. Gentlemen, if you are like Anthony Bruno and you have a villa on Lake Como and you rock your Speedo on the beach next to George Clooney's uh, villa, make sure you look the part, make sure you're silky smooth and use products from Manscaped. Like Bruno said, promo code GFP20 for 20% off and free shipping. You heard him. Head to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping using our exclusive code GFP20. That is code GFP20 at manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping. I promise you will not be disappointed. Yes, yeah, that that touches on or that connects to my point about Shaliving. You have to think from his perspective, it's about optics. If he... He knows, okay, and, and I've made this point a million times. We all know that a team with Matthews, Marner, Nylander, Tavares, and Riley can sleepwalk into the playoffs. They're going to hit 100 points. Even if it's a bad year, they're going to get into the playoffs. They'll be fighting for home ice advantage, okay? To me, it's tough, and I'm not saying he won't do it, but it will take a lot of balls, virtual living, to throw that in the trash because about – regarding what you do with the money if you lose mitch marner and it's not replaced well well maybe now you're fighting for a playoff spot that, that that's a possibility what, what if 
what if one of the signings they make or one of the trades or the trade they make it comes with a player that's an absolute disaster and we're Leafs fans. We've seen that before. That to me is why it's so risky on the way of true living. And again, about optics, I think it's tough to get away from, I can get this. I know this team is in the playoffs and I can tweak around things I have to tweak with. And I'm, I have no idea what's in Trev's head. I, I'm just saying it will take a lot of balls and I'll respect the hell out of it if he does take that risk and leaves himself out there because it could make him look really bad if it doesn't work out. And even beyond the Mar, it's, it's more to do with what he does with that trade or trade or if Marner walks or um, the free agency signings, whoever it plays out. It's more about that. I mean, Marner leaving people want it. He won't get killed. I don't think he'll get killed for that no matter what, but it's a lot of pressure to fill that money properly. Oh a yeah, lot, and look what happened with pressure. the Kachuk trade. And I know Tre Living's hands were tied, and Kachuk went to him and said, "Like, I don't want to sign here long term in Calgary." And you know, Tre Living, he kind of didn't really have a choice. But look what happened there. I mean, the Panthers have been in back to back Cup finals, and the Flames are kind of a dumpster fire right now. And you know, they gave that money to Jonathan Huberto, and he has fallen off the face of the earth. Like. There's a fine line here, man. Like this could go south real quick. And like, can we just think logically about this for a second? So the cap is rising next season by four million. John yeah. Tavares, his eleven million dollar contract is coming off the books. That's an extra fifteen million dollars. Can we just like deploy a little bit of patience here? And maybe it takes like one extra season to kind of get to like the optimal point where like. All that cap space is opened up. You move forward with Matthews, Marner, and Nylander. You get Tavares out of here and off the books, and then you kind of figure it out from there. Because another thing I would say is, okay, everyone's talking about the cap space with Marner. We'll be very careful here because, you know, I've heard people say like, oh, just go out and sign these free agent defensemen like Brandon Montour. You got to be very careful with guys like that as well. Like Brandon Montour, okay, this is just one example, but he's a 30-year-old defenseman. And listen, I don't even think he's been Florida's best defenseman throughout the playoffs. Like, Gustav Forsling has been a beast. Aaron Ekblad's been really good. So now you want to go out there, if you're Brad Treliving, and pay a 30-year-old defenseman 7 to $8 million a year on a long-term deal, which it's probably going to take to get Brandon Montour. Like, that that's a very scary thing to do. Like, you could very easily take that... 11 million, a shade under 11 million that, that's go, been going to Marner. And you could very easily spend that in a terrible way. Yeah. So that's why like the people that are saying the cap space, the cap space, that's the most important thing. What makes you think the right decisions are going to be made in that that cap space is going to be used optimally? I'm not saying Bradshaw Living sucks at his job and he's going to make bad decisions, but holy shit, man, that could go south really quick. Yeah. Well, we've all seen we've all seen people post about uh potential trading partners and Vegas comes up and there's deals with Pietrangelo. He's turning 35 this year. 35. Again, we're Leafs fans. Shouldn't we be afraid of that? This we're just gonna get the guy at the worst possible time and he's gonna fall off a cliff. Watch. If yeah, something it, like that happens. I have even it's heard hard, the, the Shea man. Theodore rumors from Vegas. Yeah, like yeah, that yeah. I could get behind because he's obviously a younger guy. Like he's pretty close in age to Mitch Marner. Really good player. Like I can get on board with like a Shea Theodore type package. Um, would Vegas be willing to do that? Uh, who the hell knows? They've made some like very aggressive decisions um, mm -hmm. during their, uh, their tenure as an NHL team and it's paid off. Um, but yeah, man, like, I, I just think the people who are like the cap space, the cap space, the cap space, like what, what's your solution here? You're just going to go out in free agency and pay like aging defensemen, like ridiculous amounts of money. Like, is that really going to make this team better? Is that going to set this team up for success? Yeah. I ask yourself that question and maybe I'm wrong and maybe true living is going to make like the most optimal signings, but you are really playing with fire. If you're you know, going into free agency thinking like, I'm just going to rebuild and fix the team through free agency. Cause that's where some of the worst decisions are made is in free agency. All so just them. tread carefully, Leaf fans tread very carefully. Yeah. The, anyway. the thing is with the cat, the thing is with the cap space and we'll wrap it up is, Oh, they can't win this way with the four guys making that kind of money. What I'd say to that. And I think it at least opens a discussion about it is like you said, the cap went up. 
at this point, it's one year of it because Tavares will be gone or re, re, will be gone or resign all the cheap. And we're at a point where we're going to be saving on our goaltending. Like Joseph Wall is going into next year. I'd like to think he's going to be the starting goalie and it's probably going to be a split of games, but I think he's kind of going to, he's going to be the a one. So wh- whoever they also get, we're going to be very, uh, we're going to get really good value on goaltending and people could say, well, we're getting really good value on goaltending. If we get rid of Marner and get this and that you're it, true, that, that's an absolute possibility, but you're asking a lot. You're at, you're, you really and truly are. So it's going to be fun, Bruno. <laughs> it's going to, it's going to be a fun summer. It's going to be a fun season. And I think it's going to be, I think it's good. I think this may be the most leaf season, even the most leaf season we've ever seen. And that's saying a lot because I think Marner is going to go the distance. Without, without signing that piece of paper. Yeah, I think there's a very real possibility that he just plays out the season, takes this to free agency. And one last point I want to make on this with all the people who are saying like, oh, you can't pay all these guys $10 million. Well, the Edmonton Oilers, and I know they have the best player in the world and maybe the most skilled player we've ever seen in the history of hockey, but they are in the Stanley Cup final paying Jack Campbell $5 million and paying Darnell Nurse yep. nine and a quarter million who as of recording is a minus 11 in 23 playoff games. You see so that, that stat last night. 14 he wins. and a quarter million Lapore in those two guys. And they're in the cup final. You see that stat last night. There was a point in the game where his shot differential was like minus 19 in the second. Oh, it's terrible. Just a disaster. So again, maybe this is like a rare circumstance where they also happen to have like the greatest player in the history of the sport. They but, get value. The Oilers get value. Bouchard, Nugent Hopkins, Drysidel. That, that's where they get their real value. Yeah, but don't give me this Hyman. bullshit that you can't have, you know, Matthews, Nylander, and Marner on the roster all making the money they're making. And don't tell me you you can't build a quality team around those guys when the Edmonton Oilers are paying 14 and a quarter million to two guys, one of which who just doesn't play anymore, and the other defenseman who absolutely stinks. So I don't want to hear this bullshit that you can't build a team around three all-star level players and and dare I say almost heart trophy level players. Matthews has won a heart. Uh Marner, and I'm not saying Marner and Nylander are gonna win heart trophies, but like holy shit, these guys are all like top 20 to 25 players in the sport. So don't give me this bullshit that you can't build a winning team with those guys on the roster. I just I refuse to believe that. 